So for this video, I've got this project that I'm working on. It is a Rust crate and some Python code that goes into Blender. It's called Skeen. You can see the site for it right down here on the bottom. And to give a very brief overview of what Skeen is, if we hop over to Blender, if you have a running Bevy application, which is a game engine, then you can fetch a Bevy type registry, and that gives you the opportunity to come over here and insert whatever component you want. All of this information is generated from something called the type registry inside of Bevy through a Bevy remote protocol, HTTP call, not super important, but we get that information from Bevy as JSON. That JSON is then used to build that component list. When we insert a component like this, then that information is also used to build the form that you see here. This is a particularly pathological version of a component because as you can see, this affine two kind of has a matrix inside of it, has an X axis and a Y axis, it has a VEC two inside of that. So there's a lot of nesting for these values, which makes them not really like the best option to present, right? And if you insert this, I've inserted this onto the cube. So this like super component of glam types is what we're looking at here, then gets exported. And when it gets exported, it exports in a certain format. Now, one of the issues here is that this glam affine two type, or actually if we look for uh, the VEC three should be somewhere in here, just a regular VEC three. If we look at a VEC three, you'll see I've already done some of the work. VEC threes are supposed to serialize to arrays, even though they are structured as objects due to that reflection information. Similarly, all of the rest of these should be arrays and not objects. Now the reflection information we're given tells us that they are objects, which is why they're serializing as objects. And to bring all that back, we basically have a lot of this kind of reflection data that theoretically could change from Bevy version to Bevy version. Serializations could change a bunch of things about the structure of the data could change without us really knowing. And to that end, we have a bunch of test components here. So here's a player component with name power test, just to kind of show you how this translates, we can select the player component, insert it, it's now on the box. And we've got, you know, name, power and test to play with over here as like an F32, an integer and like a string. And then that exports in a certain way, this would export as an object. And what I've been doing is basically pulling that library of types in and writing effectively like the same test over and over and over. Uh, so in this case, we've got player, I instantiate it with a value, we boot up the type registry, we have to register the player type, which I didn't do in this test, because it doesn't really matter. Uh, but generally speaking, we want to register this type with the type registry, then we want to see what bevy serializes it as, and make sure that it matches what we expect that to be. And this is the same test for all of these including for things like timers and even the VEC3, you can see that we already have special support for. So we set up this type, we have the type registry, a new one, we register the type, we serialize it, and then we check the string. So this is effectively like a manual version of a snapshot test. And there's a Rust crate that actually does snapshot testing. So as I look into doing this like really big glam related component, right? which has, you know, matrices and VEX and I32 VEX3s and I8 VEX3s and VEX3s and F32, whatever, you know, like a bunch of like the same kind of types and whatever. It gets kind of to be a hassle to write this same test over and over for all these types. But when we upgrade Bevy versions, we still want to know if the serialization for any of these has changed in any way. And the easiest way to do that is to write out the serialization for all of these components to a file, it's called a snapshot. And then every time we run this test in the future, for example, if we upgrade Bevy versions or, up, or Bevy upgrades a Glam version and Glam changes their serialization or something like that, uh, then we are kind of like notified when we do that upgrade. At which point we can decide to go into, you know, so I can pick the right file. We can go into the Python code and say, hey, for the VEC2s, we actually don't want an object. So anytime we see, you know, a VEC2 or a VEC3 or whatever, you know, return an array of the XYZ values instead of that object. So this is kind of a way to detect things that are changing over time that are kind of out of our control. Skeen is a library built on reflection and data infrastructure that Bevy provides. Bevy is allowed to change that between versions for whatever reason. And whenever that does change, as we're maybe like 0 0.17, 0 0.18, etc., we want to know if they change. So enter snapshot tests and Insta, actually. So what we're going to end up doing here is basically writing tests that look a little bit like this. They're going to have values. These values are going to get serialized and written out to files. 
And then every time we run these tests in the future, the serialized values are checked against the old files, so on and so forth. And today we're just going to be working with the Rust type serialization from an actual value to this data. But we also want to do integration tests on the Python serializations and also maybe some round trip stuff. So I think in this case, we can move these tests to this components file. It's notable that we don't have a workspace here, even though I do have multiple crates in this directory. So we'll give it a start here with Insta. We'll enable the YAML feature because that's what they happen to be doing in the installation. There's some notes here around how Insta should be compiled. So this is very familiar to anybody who's written a Bevy application before and looked at what kind of optimizations should be used. This will optimize the Insta package, but not our own code. So Insta actually tries to push you towards YAML, which is their kind of preferred snapshotting format. But we can also provide Saturday serializable values. So I'm just going to kind of assume that assert JSON snapshot will work for basically replacing this piece of code in our test. We construct this serializer using the type registry. We serialize to JSON and we are checking, but we will actually swap this out with assert JSON snapshot. So I'm just going to copy one of the tests that we did have in the other file and bring it in to start with. In this case, the test is using bevy underscore reflect, but we probably want to change that to bevy reflect because we are using just bevy in this other test components. This is only ever compiled and used in tests where we do have the full bevy package available, whereas the tests lived before in the other crate where we didn't necessarily have the full package available. So we've got our struct fields test ported. We've got a player constructed, we've got the type registry. We do want to register the type here even though it doesn't really matter. So I just ran cargo test to make sure that this would actually run. And I just realized that we don't actually do a self star. So we're going to do a superstar here instead of importing from test components, which is what the crate name should be. And my guess is that because they told us to add YAML in the beginning, that we'll probably have to enable the JSON feature ourselves. I didn't actually check. So as expected, we don't have Saturday JSON installed in this uh, test. And we've got a test running and like no no actual test happening here because I commented this out. So the idea is going to be something like this, where we run the stuff that we expected to run with a type registry. We assert JSON snapshot and hopefully our serializer works here. And if our serializer doesn't work, we'll have to stringify it ourselves. So because we didn't enable the JSON feature, assert JSON snapshot isn't available. So we'll go over here and replace YAML with JSON. We use JSON to communicate with the Python side of things. So that's why I'm choosing to use JSON here. And we can see some of the output here. We stored a new test snapshot for struct tests, which looks like this test components player with an object name power test. This is really what we would expect to see. And we can see in source, there's a new snapshots directory with that test component, which we can go check out. Now, somewhat interestingly, this has like a YAML front matter. I was kind of hoping to be able to use these snapshots in other tests, but the first thing we need to do is do a cargo install or I guess this isn't on crates.io. It's really interesting that this insta.rs isn't the insta crate. So I'm going to pipe this to less instead of shh and see, oh, it's cargo insta. So I'm generally okay with using their install script. I do think it's just cargo installing cargo insta, but it's been a while since I installed insta uh, and we'll do cargo insta review and it will start giving us these snapshots. In this case, we've got the player snapshot. We can sort of hide and show some different data and hit accept here. So now we've accepted this and this dot snap file includes that. So now we can get rid of this extra stuff. I have a bunch of other tests that I care about that already exist in here that I've already set up. So I'm going to bring all of those in as well. And I'm just going to make sure I register all the types and serialize them in the same way. Now registration is recursive. So we only need to register the top level value if we have an interior value like this. And these are all being used in the real world, sort of like if we were, I was going to sit here and manually start a fake bet the application and go check Blender to see what the UI looked like, these components are all used there. So there's a little bit of duplication. So I took a second here to rewrite uh, the tests and I wrote a function that I can use inside of all the other tests that I think I'm actually going <laughs> to rename. We're going to name this snapshot component value. So you can see that this is used in every test now. Now every test is actually quite simple compared to what it was before. We construct the value that we care about and we snapshot it. 
And then we've got snapshot component value here, which takes a T, which is partial reflect and get type registration, or implements partial reflect and get type registration, which are actually what we need. We construct our type registry using the type that we passed in. So this type is actually going to be inferred if you look at the tests. The tests will allow us to just construct the player, and then by passing in that player value, we know what the generic T is here. So we can use that T in our test infrastructure, register that T type, and then serialize it. So we're doing the actual insta assert JSON snapshot inside of this, which allows our test to be very small, which is great because we're gonna have a bunch of them. So we'll cargo insta review, and I'll make this a little bit bigger because I think this is gonna be potentially quite large. And I think I'm gonna start off by just checking the old tests as we go through this. So a struct with color is supposed to be test component struct with color base HSLA, and then highlight awk LCHA. So this looks good to me. The multi-element tuple struct is 12, followed by an array of three values. I think this is actually correct. I think the snapshot is correct. This test is not correct. And this test is not correct specifically because if you don't register VEC3, you end up with an object representation. If you do register VEC3 in the type registry, then you get this array representation. And the array representation is like, quote unquote, the right representation. Because when we export the data from Blender, it has to be in an array format. So we want it to be registered and therefore reflected like that. So this looks good to me. Non-zero numbers, good. Player, I know this one, this is good. Timer container, I'm not entirely sure about. This is one of those types that kind of expands far beyond what you expect it to. So this is the timer inside of a bevy. So seconds and nanos, this looks good to me. Tuple struct should be just the value. Linear velocity is a VEC3, so it should just be that array. Some things low should be 12. I think that makes sense. This is an enum type. So it is an object for 12. Optional name, if it's some name, then it's supposed to be the value. I think that's correct. Not a player is a unit enum and a rich struct, so on and so forth. Marker component is an object. Some things is a variant with a name inside of it. I think actually this bucket of types is going to change because this bucket of types is meant to represent types that we don't currently support yet. So entity is placeholder, which is this number. And then UUID is this UUID, just so that we have something static for the tests. But BVEC3A, I believe, is something that we are actually going to correctly handle after this. You can see BVEC here is supposed to be an array, but I think actually in this test, it shows up as no, it does show up as an array there. So we did register it. Um, but if you look at the actual type in the glam docs or something like that, it looks like an object. So that's all good. All those snapshots are ready to go. And if we run cargo test now, so now what I'm gonna do is actually remove those old tests, which actually cuts the, the Rust plugin uh, more than in half, which is hilarious. And then I know there's at least one more that I wanted to add here, but I'm going to, we're gonna add the snapshots in here to our Git repo. We don't want the news, actually. Oh, I added everything in here accidentally. Not really what I meant to do, but it's okay. I was also working on uh, a new example, so my repo was kind of dirty. And I think actually there's something a little unfortunate going on here. I'm not exactly sure why. Where the snapshots, so here's snapshot two, right? Test component two dot snap. The naming for all of these is the same, but the order is different. So they're all the right values, but they're all in different orders, which is really unfortunate. So I wonder if there is a way for us to add the name. So that's actually pretty unfortunate that it relies on the order and thus the tests don't execute in order. Rust Analyzer also for some reason not able to expand this macro. So this issue is actually exactly what we're running into. If you create a helper with something like assert YAML snapshot or JSON snapshot in our case, the macro only pulls that it looks like there's a workaround here under patterns. It wants to use suffixes like this for every snapshot, which technically would work and which could then be run here. So we could define this like custom macro here and then more or less set this to whatever we want. I don't think we really need the macro though. And then I think if we use standard any type name, we can actually set the snapshot suffix to that type. I don't love this from a testing perspective that isn't unique enough. We could pass in a label there instead. 
So you can now see that the file name here, source snapshots, full module path, full module path to the actual struct that we're testing. Um, I don't love those names because the other thing about this is that that will result in, I think, the same name for, for example, an optional name here, All right? So we've kind of like overwritten, I think, this optional name with two different values and we've only really kept one of the snapshots, which is actually really interesting because there are situations in which we have other values that have duplicates that do work. And the answer for that one is that the ones that work are in different tests. So we could demand that all of these run in order and get rid of this whole issue. I think what I'm going to do instead is just pass in a label and just make it really easy. Is this the most amazing, efficient way to do this? No. Does it matter? Also no. And it does let me put these values anywhere we want. So now they all have these like very specific names, right? Test components, test snapshot, component values, and optional value, whatever, an optional name. And now when we run our tests, all of the snapshots go into the right snapshot file, which means that now we are finally at the point that I wanted to get to, which is I want to serialize that glam like superstruct that we had. So basically up here, we have all of these values that we're going to have to fill out. And I've got some extra comments here at the moment and I am missing. Oh, right. <laughs> so this is missing a whole ton of fields and somewhat obviously they all end up having to get filled out. I'm going to leave the comment from the other. Um, I think all of these technically will have defaults. And while I am a little concerned that doing the defaults will hide potential bugs, I think that we're only trying to test the structure here and not the actual values getting serialized, right? Like I'm trying to test to make sure that these, so if we look at all of these, right? Um, all of these are serialized as arrays. Jack four is an array, Matt three is an array. All of these, like even the really long ones are arrays, you know, DMAT four is array, UVEC eight is an array. All of these values are arrays. And this is really what I wanted to see. I wanted to see this, make sure that they were all actually arrays without like going through a whole bunch of extra steps to do so. Um, of course we had to set up Insta to get this to work in the first place, but now for any future types we want to do, if we want to add like special kinds of tests for Avian or something like that, it's easier to add those tests and to check to see if these values are changing or not over time. We could also add basically a whole ton of types from Bevy itself, which we might want to automate, honestly, but cargo Insta review, I'm going to accept this as the expected output. We're going to add snapshots and lib. And actually I kind of feel like I don't want the module on the front of these makes it a little bit hard to read, but now we can go into say super glam, look for any type that we want to check to see what it serializes as and make sure that our serialization that we're writing for Python actually is targeting even the right thing to target. So with that knowledge, I now know that all of those types need to be specially handled here because they are different than the object serialization that we're actually getting. And in the future, if any of this changes, we'll be able to use these snapshot tests to tell if they changed. Now there's a whole bunch of tests still to write here, dealing with and checking this data and automating that is a super important part of the project. So doing things like headlessly running Blender, inserting a component and then getting that value out of the GLTF file and checking it is going to be one end of things. Knowing what we're supposed to be serializing against in the first place is what we just did. And then the third thing will be serializing the values that we actually get from those Python integration tests and making sure they actually serialize into a bevy application as we would have expected. So that's it for today. It's uh, you know a dive into a bit of open source maintenance. I had an interesting problem where we have to track this data somehow, right? I have to track how all of these things are serializing. I have to expose that for potential potential contributors, etc. And we have to actually build on top of this as well. So anything in the future that is awkward in any way, a great example being timers or durations, knowing that duration doesn't change or knowing that the timer structure isn't changing and things like that is going to be super important uh, for even knowing whether you can upgrade something without losing data. And I think that's it for this video. If you like this kind of video, let me know. This is just some kind of open source maintenance that I have to do. So I could jump into these videos and explain more and more regularly. And otherwise, go check out Skeen if you're doing Bevy and Blender stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.